Welcome everybody. Um, this better be a pretty mind-blowing tutorial for you guys because uh, I think I found out a lot of cool stuff. Um, the title does say third-person RPG, but it is going to be more so about the uh, the technical side. Um, this isn't going to be about how to make your hero level, um, as I just made a giant tutorial about that. Um, so this is going to be more about the uh, interface and doing kind of the technical side with the skybox and doing the camera. And um, why don't we go ahead and take a look at how it'll look at the end. Okay, so you can see I'm in game here, and the interface has been pretty manipulated. Um, it is still, still all Blizzard elements, though. Um, and this is because as of patch 1.2, we can actually move around their, their own things. We don't have to use dialogues for a custom inventory, I mean, custom uh, UI. Um, so when I click on him, you can see I got my little wireframe up here, my attack and stuff down here. All my abilities are kind of spread out on the bottom now, and the mini-map's up here. Um, as far as the controls go, it's just just sort of like regular StarCraft 2 where you select a thing and then you select where you want to go. Um, and the camera just rotates automatically. So that's what, I've, that's what I'm going to show for this tutorial, and that's what we're going to make. Um, now, you can use the up and down arrow to switch the angle, and uh, wherever you click, the camera sort of rotates too. Um, and you're going to see why they have this fog here. There's actually a good reason why it's sort of foggy into the white abyss. Um, and that's the best I could figure out for this tutorial, but uh, after doing this tutorial, you could probably come out and figure something better, maybe. Um, but anyways, yeah, this is pretty cool. It's sort of a third-person little RPG um, and custom, custom uh, UI and sort of a moving fog system to stop the map from rendering everything across like the entire game world. Um, so, this tutorial is going to be split into three parts. The first part is going to sort of be the basic terrain set up and just set up, basically. Uh, and part two is going to actually be where they do the camera and the movement and this, this, the fog and everything. And part three is going to be where we actually tear up the Blizzard inventory. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying inventory. The Blizzard UI, I mean, um, to sort of be all this kind of clean change from their default uh, UI. So uh, let's go ahead and get started in the editor. Okay, so in this case I am going to make a new map. And um, I don't know if... I'm going to just pick uh, Agria, but uh, I don't know if you're going to do that for yours. But anyways, I'm just going to select some default dependencies. Make sure we have all the campaign ones, just so we have Zeratul and stuff. Um, 64 by 64 is good, and Agria is good. Um, that's what I actually used in this demo that you can see in the back. Uh, same thing. So, um, first thing we're going to do is zoom out a bit here and make, hit O to make sure your camera bounds are on. And then go to Map, Map Bounds. And then we're just going to push them all to the edge. Um, because when you do make a third person map, you want to have as much space as you can. Um, and I made a relatively small map here, but I'm guessing most third person maps would be 256 by 256. So, and you'd still want to extend this to the edge so you get as much playable area as you can. So, um, as I said, this is part one. So in part one, we're going to do more of the terrain here. Um, if that's not important to you, then you can switch to part two. Um, but I also will, at the end of this part, is I will position the first camera position. So you might want to watch the end, the end part of this part one for that. Um, okay, so... Um, when you think back to World of Warcraft or things, they don't actually use the cliffs like we would here in the terrain editor if you're on layer terrain. Um, in StarCraft 2 you paint your terrain like this and that's how you do your walls. But in, uh, in, in World of Warcraft what they actually do was they would paint this height tool here and pick a large size, large fall off, and even larger size, maybe 10, and then just start painting the mountains like this. So this would be the edge of the map and they would just paint it up sort of like that um, and then you build and then you'd have to paint rock so go around and just paint some walls sort of like this and uh, that's sort of the edge of the world uh, don't let the player kind of see behind these things so we just paint the cliffs like this and let's say you could keep going and I'll just f fast forward through this part okay so let's say now you've painted all the terrain here and then what you do right after that is um, switch to the texture tool here and switch to Agria Rock and then change the brush size down a bit and then paint rock along the edges sort of like that and I will fast forward through this part too. 
Okay, and then uh, after you've painted the rock here, then maybe just spread some grass out just to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, that's not really the whole point of this tutorial, but it's still nice to have uh, good quality uh, terrain to work with. And I'm going to paint some height just to kind of vary up the terrain a bit because when you're uh, when you're when you're down low like this, it looks starts to look really flat, different than regular RTS sort of view. So you definitely have to paint some sort of variation on the terrain. It can't just be perfectly flat like you find in most maps. Um, and that's a bit better now. And now after we've done this, hit H to switch to the pathing tool. And we're going to paint pathing, no pathing, uh, size maybe 3. And we're just going to paint it around the edge here so that uh, they can't walk off the edge of the map or walk up to it too far. Just paint it along the rocks sort of so it's natural where it would block otherwise they could walk on these hills which wouldn't be too good okay and now they're blocked off so that's good and you'd actually want to paint uh, this whole area behind so they couldn't blink to it or anything but um, I'll leave that to you to do that in yours uh, anyways actually well maybe I should just quickly do a swipe through here because this will be downloadable alright anyways so we got that and now we're gonna play some trees so hit D to go to doodad and um, we're actually going to do some stuff with the trees too to make it more uh, realistic when you're down in third person view. Um, so search f for uh, tree here. There's too many doodads, it's taken a while. Uh, okay, agria tree. So I'm going to place a few of them, kind of spread them out. Don't make them too dense because when you're down low in third person view, it starts to get a lot more congested when you have all these trees everywhere. Um, you'll even notice that, as my example is World of Warcraft, they, they actually have big trees, but they're really spread out. Um, not much to get in the way of the player. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of trees in this very strange looking forest from, from the overhead view, but... Um, now what we're going to do is switch to the data editor, and we're going to scale the trees up. So if go to the actors tab and all doodads that you place in the editor are just actors um, and search for tree because actors are just the visual models that are in the game uh, find tree agria and uh, let's hit the field art dash scale and let's make it two 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 and now we can see this looks a little bit cooler now if you're down low in here feels more like a real sort of large forest and the, like I said, the map is pretty small that we chose, so it might not look right. But you definitely want to make a map that is, uh, oops, that is bounds of click this, check that off, and then make it all the way to 256. Um, because when you're so up close on the map, it actually starts to have a lot less space. Um, and now that we've done that, we're going to just place the starting Zera tool and the first camera, and then we'll be done with part one. Um, so hit the U to go to the units layer, the train editor here, and we're going to place a Zera tool as soon as it finally loads. Uh, okay, so for player one, we're going to drop a hero of Zera tool, and I'm going to place him right here in the center, and then double click him and make sure he's facing 90 on his rotation. Okay. Now uh, hit C to go to cameras, press middle mouse down to make sure that you're on the default game camera, and then zoom in a bit, center it on him, and hit create camera, and I'm going to uncheck show camera so I can see a bit better, and then right click again and go modify properties, check off preview in the train editor, and let's increase the field of view a bit, so it's more first person style, um, let's lower the distance quite a bit, and then let's uh, change the pitch so that we can kind of this will be sort of the first default third person view up the Z offset a bit and then let's lower the distance even more there we go I think that's a good good workable size um, maybe increase the field of view a bit so you can see a bit rounder and we'll press OK and just press view to make sure you see it looks good it's about centered on him, that's pretty good. Uh, let me view it again, okay. And uh, one thing you actually want to do that I just missed um, is back in here in the camera, change the far clip to 55. So 
what the far clip will do is it'll make like this black wall that you can see back here. Um, you can see as I move back, that far clip should start to kick in. Um, well, actually, this map is pretty small, but um, if I go view this camera and if I lower the far clip really small, you're going to start to see the black wall come in. There we go. Um, so that this does, what this means is that anything beyond this black wall is not going to get rendered by your computer, which is good for the fact of running performance-wise, but then it's bad for the fact that you have this black wall and that you can't see beyond that point. Um, so we're going to increase it to 55, and that works out to be pretty good frames per second still. And then in part two, we're going to actually make a moving skybox that moves with your hero with the fog, so it sort of looks like it goes... So you don't see that black wall, so it sort of looks like it goes off to infinity. Um, okay. And that's it for part one. So I'll see you in part two.